This is Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, and today we're going to make bar graphs in After Effects using shape layers. It doesn't make use of any 3D nonsense, so it's pretty easy to do, and we use the grid system to keep it all in line. So let's open up After Effects and get into it. The first thing to do in After Effects is create a new composition to the frame size and duration that you require. So we're going to go with HDTV 1080 24 frames a second preset, and we're using a duration of 30 seconds. Probably won't use all of it. Now I'm just going to make a quick background using a new solid and I'm just going to go ahead and make it a nice light sort of like a light blue color here. Okay, that's good enough. Although it says pale lime green solid, I guess nobody's perfect. So we're going to make this set of shape layers and all using the path tool. But first we're going to bring up the grid. You can do that this way or you can go view show grid and then we're going to go snap to grid because we want the grid to help us draw better lines because it's hard otherwise. Anyway, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the pen tool and take the stroke off here. We don't need one of those and make sure that we have a fill, a solid fill. You can use whatever kind of fill you want and we're gonna go with a brightness of 50. And we are going to start by drawing some of the bars. Now essentially to do that, we're really just drawing a rectangle. So we're going to draw, so I'm going to put one point down here, and then next one here, and then vertically up from that, and then over, and then down. Now you want to just go in and make sure that you have these lined up on some major grid lines. So that it kind of makes sense. And, and using those major grid lines, we are going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, ten squares high. And quite frankly, the width and height and all of this of your bars is not really that important, but for my purposes, let's say we are ten of these major bars high, just to illustrate what we're doing here. So we've got that, good. Now we're going to rename this to be bar one. Go to the contents of bar one, you have something called shape one, which has a path, a stroke, a fill, and a transform on it. So take shape one, and we can rename shape one to be face. And we can duplicate that, we can rename this to be top. And we can duplicate that, and we can rename this to be uh, side. So now we are going to transform the shape of these, putting face at the front, and uh, top on top of that, and then side. So if we go to the part marked side, we click on the path, click on the path again, you're able to drag out and edit this path that is defining now the side. So I'm just gonna move it over here. I'm gonna grab these points, and I'm just gonna move it to be uh, right here. So just like that, and then you can change its fill in here or up here. And I'm just going to make it a little bit darker, so, or lighter, or, yeah, definitely darker. So I'm going to do that. So now we've created sort of a fake 3D look to this thing. And then with the top, same thing, I'm going to take the path, and we are going to alter that path. Um, so I'm just going to put this up here, and then move this to be here. And we are going to change its fill to be lighter. There we go. So we've created what is essentially uh, the end state of a complete bar that's at 100% of whatever the graph goes to. Let's say we're here at 106. And we take all of these things and we go into their paths. And then we just set keyframes in the paths because those are what we're interested in animating. Now when you select the layer, you can hit U to bring up just the things you've altered about it. Now we're going to go back, you know, however many frames you like, and we're going to set the initial state, which is going to be basically at 0% for this thing. So we're going to go in here, and we're going to just double click on these things, and what we want to do is to be able to call up their points, and then just drag them down, drag it down, to the bottom, so it rests right there. And then they animate from the one state to the end state, and we're all good. So let's just easy ease that, and then drag these handles over, and there we go. So 
we've got this thing animating from a zero all the way up to 100%. Now, if you want to have the bar graph show values that are somewhere in between there, you're going to need to compute those values. And what you'll need to do is get keyframes associated with them. Here's the easiest way I've found to do that. Instead of easy easing these, let's just leave them as flat. Now, we know that halfway between this keyframe and this keyframe is going to be 50%. So if that's the value you're at, then this is 50%. You'll set some keyframes here, and uh, that'll be good. So let's have the bar animate up to full and then settle back down at its desired uh, end state for keyframes. So it goes up, and then it comes down here. Now, if we want to create more bars, we can just duplicate this, which will make bar 2, then call up its stuff. And then we kind of want to find what value it's at. You know, maybe it's around here. I have no idea what your particular values are, um, going for data or otherwise. And uh, so then it's going to settle at higher. And we need the bars to be next to each other. So you can just take the layer and move it over by position, you know, just by tapping nudge. And that'll create, you know, a couple of bars. If you want to offset these in time, then just uh, move them a little bit here. Just move the one layer out of the way. That's good. And uh, now that you have the values, you can go ahead and start, you know, messing with their keyframes to have them do something interesting. So let's do that. Let's take these keyframes. Let's easy ease them. And then we'll go in here and we'll do just one of these. Really easy, just increasing the influence of the back handle and uh, that should be appropriate. One thing I will advise is that since these are going to be growing out of a floor of some kind, cut off the first keyframe of them or just cut off that first keyframe of motion just so they start coming in moving and uh, that can be pretty helpful. So far so good. So we've got a couple of things out here. Let's just move those to be more in the center and we need an axis of some kind for us to perhaps display this on. And we're going to use the exact same method we did to come up with these. So if you remember, we take our pen tool and then we just draw that initial rectangle. So I'm just going to draw here and here and then draw all the way over to here, maybe around here and then up and then close. Maybe not there exactly. Then you want to go in here and just make sure all of your points are stuck on the grid because that will make it quite a bit easier for you to work with just because the grid won't be in your way as much. You gotta, you gotta make the grid work for you, not the other way around. So we've got this, we go in here to that shape layer, you know, uh, duplicate it, you know, start calling it things like face and top and side. Same rules apply though. We're just gonna go in here to the side I'm going to find its path, take that path, uh, take some points of that path. And uh, one of the important things to remember is to not click and drag over duplicates of things because you'll just end up moving all of the points associated with either layer. So we want that to line up there. Safe to click and drag over these points. They're not really over top of anything. And then uh, we just need to make sure that this is somewhere good. Does that line up with the angles? How about there? There? Maybe there. Mm, that looks accurate. Okay, good. And then, you know, you want to do things like making sure that the colors match, you know, in the scene. So that seems to make sense. And go to the top here. Good. Now we can just move the points of this around. And it can be difficult to get a hold of those points. So don't be frustrated if it is not uh, second nature to you. Um, it is, it is a legitimately frustrating endeavor sometimes to get a handle on those things. So there we go. That looks good. And then I'll just make sure that it has the same color, you know, in keeping with the lighting that should be around to be that color. Good. And then we make sure that this is below these. Okay, so far so good. And we need it to animate on as well in some capacity. So, you know, I'll just call up, call up its paths, path, path, good, good. Then we go back to its original state, which should be all of these points uh, mashed in over here. All right, 
that's pretty good it comes out that comes up perfect and I'm going to easy ease those and then we're going to duplicate this layer and call up its keyframes and all that and uh, what we like to do I think is we like this initial state and then we just need to create a new end state because we would really like to have this thing um, also be the vertical axis so I'm just going to delete these last keyframes here and uh, you know, I'm just going to solo this layer in fact so then we're going to go in here select this and select you know hopefully all of the points or er, here we go select the points up at the top here just the top points and then we're going to drag that up don't really know how far up we have to drag it really what it helps and I've left some of the other layers on so that I know just exactly how high things need to go okay this high perfect good drag those keyframes back and so what we have now is a couple of axes and uh, this this needs to be fixed up which can be done by simply taking this layer and then moving it up a little so no one no one will ever notice uh, do 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 just like this Boop. perfect so now you've got bar graph animating on you can put on values titles whatever you'd like but this is how to come up with a very nice looking bar graph for use in your motion graphics and data presentations um, just keep in mind that eventually things might start to get too big or too out of the way and uh, you can do things like create a new null object and then take all of these things parent them to that null object and then you can just scale this down and put it wherever um, I know this is a, an interesting alternative to 3D using what is flat animation, but it looks pretty nice and it gives you a lot of options. So this has been Evan Abrams for PremiumBeat.com, your source for music and sound effects, which I'm sure bar graphs do need sometimes. Hopefully this is helpful for your After Effects and motion graphics projects, and it teaches you a little bit about how to maybe visualize some data in After Effects. Hopefully you enjoyed it, and if you like learning about After Effects and other things, then uh, follow me on the Twitter, at EC Abrams, and of course, stop by the Premium Beat blog, because there is great stuff there, not only in After Effects, but a lot of other applications. There's a lot of tips, tricks, tutorials from myself and other experts in their fields. So, again, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you around the internet.